I'm very pleased to share with you some knowledge about nuclear magnetic resonance. And let us start with one dimension. What is NMR? It is nuclear magnetic resonance as analytical technique. Do we really need it? And what is the use of it? Yes, it is very important because it is a structural elucidation of new compound. Without NMR, you cannot identify new compound. But of course, it used also for identification of non-compound. Additionally, about purity of the compound, and this is very important in drug discovery. Furthermore, the stereochemistry could be proved by NMR. Is the NMR is very expensive? Yes. Why? Two reasons. We use deuterated solvent, not normal solvent, and this deuterated is extremely expensive. Moreover, the machine itself is very expensive. When it is 400, of course, 500 more expensive, 600, 900 is the most expensive one. We should remember also that we have to ma do maintenance of the machine, and this costs money as well. In very simple way, we will start today in proton and the carbon, and we will see together how we can use this powerful technique even by only one dimensional. And in the next lectures will be two dimensional with more uh, examples. Start with the first in proton in MR is called chemical shift or delta. And this delta is in PPM, and this is the equation to calculate it. What about when we prepare the sample for NMR? It must be soluble. So the solvent should have adequate dissolving power. It shouldn't be associated with a solute molecule. And it shouldn't be interfering with the signal of your structure. And finally, it must be deuterated solvent. What about factors affecting the chemical shift? And from this point, we will see that organic chemistry is matched very well with the chemical shift. And this is why we love NMR when we understand it. And this I will do my best to explain it to you in a simple way. So the most, the first important factor is electronegativity, anisotropic effect, and the hydrogen bond. Additional factors, of course, even if it is very little effect, is a solvent effect and the temperature. Let us start with electronegativity. In very simple way, if you take missile group, without any effect. So it will give a chemical shift about 0 0.8. Let us attach it with carbonyl group. Oh, the oxygen now will withdraw, will withdraw the electrons from the missile group. It means that it will move the B from 0 0.8 until 2. This we call it de-shielding. What about if the oxygen is directly attached to the missile group? It means more stronger electron withdrawing, then it moved more to 3.4. What about if it is more electronegative? It means more strong in electron withdrawing, it will move further to 4.2. So you agree with me now that electron withdrawing group increase the electron density at the nucleus, and this makes it de-shielding. And the opposite way, if it is electron donating group, it will be the going to the opposite direction. Let us show you to you in another example. This, you don't have any effect. So 0 0.2. Started to have bromine. So it moved the shielding. It started to have chlorine, more strong. More the shielding. Started to have fluorine. This is the strongest. Then it will move to 4.2. What about it? The rules of physical organic chemistry that Electronegativity means inductive effect, it is distance effect. So when it is directly attached to the carbon here, this means this proton will be affecting a strong electron drawing group, so 3.4. What about the second one? Less de-shielded. Third, less de-shielded. Finally, not affected at all. I think you agree with me that the NMR is fun. Second, Hydrogen bonding. Imagine how much could be affected. Let us see. The OH and the NH, 
will be in this region. If it is hydrogen bonding, can you imagine? It deshielded. Of course, this also depending on the solvent effect, acidity, concentration, temperature, etc. We go to the next factor, which is anisotropic effect. If it is benzene ring, for example, this will make circulating of pi electrons in blue, while create a ring current in red color. And what is the effect of this? Of course, it induced the magnetic effect and it will make it deshielded. Let us take an example to show you. You see, this is a benzene ring which is highly deshielded. If it is an aldehyde, it is even highly deshielded, while in acetylenic, it is shielded. Let us go to proton NMR. I think now you agree with me about deshielding, which means that the missile group will be here with no effect at all. And if it started to be affected, it will be deshielded. And why deshielded? Because it has high frequency. And what means high frequency? It means low, low field. Second, if you look to the peaks, from 0 0.6, it will be 6.2, it will be aliphatic. Then it will be aromatic until here. Then after that, it will be the functional group in very simple way, right? And this is to show you the regions of aliphatic, alpha substituted, alpha, di substituted, olefinic, aromatic, aldehydic, and the functional group. To make it very simple, until here is aliphatic, then it is aromatic and alpha beta unsaturated ketone, of course, and finally is a functional group. I think this is show you many examples which you can apply the factor there. So please study this when you have time and see the rules which we have been discussing before. Now we go to very important rule, which n plus one rule, and then this is another fun. Why? Because in this case, you don't study the group itself, which we have studied before in the chemical shift. In this case, we will study about adjacent group. So when you apply the rule, it gives you an idea what is the adjacent protons, what is the adjacent protons carrying by carbon. So N plus one means that N is the number of protons in the adjacent carbon atoms. Let us take an example. If you look to this group, now we apply. What is the next? From this side is two protons. So two plus one equals three. So the peak will be three signal, three. So this is one peak of three. Why? Because two plus one. Second one here, B. What is about the adjacent one? Two proton plus one equals three. So it is two peaks and each one is three. And the same you can apply here as well. In this case, for example, the adjacent will be only one proton. It means it will be one plus one equal two. That's why Pascal's triangle is the N. If it is zero, means that N plus one equal one, then it will be only singlet. So the peak will be only one line. What about if the adjacent carbon have only one proton? So it will be one. One plus one equal two. It means we call it doubly. And these, the two lines in the peak will be equal in intensity. So this give you the relative intensity. If you have two proton in the adjacent one, it means it will give you three, six, three in the peak. And it means one to two to one. How it comes to? Because one plus one is equal to. So the left hand side all the time is one. And the right hand side all the time is one. And in the middle, you will see the sum of both. So one plus one is two. Here, one plus two is three. Two plus one is three, etc. So you can practice in order to see the relative area of n one, and you must know about singlet, doublet, triplet, etc. Let us take another example to show you when it is doublet, for example. So you see the intensity. So the V has two lines, is equal, this, almost equal. 
and when it is triplet, it means that you have three signal and it is one to three to one. So you can practice in this way to know about the adjacent curve. Another phenomena in organic chemistry, if you see triplet and the quartet, according to N plus one rule, immediately you write it is acyl group. What about if you see triplet and the triplet? Immediately you write CH2, CH2, according to N plus one rule. So this with practice, then you can immediately identify part of the structure in this way, right? Then we come to another point, which is coupling constant, J coupling. What means J coupling? If you take tablet, for example, like what we discussed before, so the distance between the two signal, this distance is called the coupling constant. And this you can, from the machine, it calculated automatically. Then you will see that, for example, here, this is a triplet and the quartet. And then you can see the coupling constant is the distance between these two. And again, in the quartet, you can see the distance here. So let us see why this is, is important. Look to this structure. What is the difference between these two proton and these two proton? These are cis form. That's why you see the coupling constant is low. What about in case of trans? The coupling constant will be very high. What about if you see the coupling constant between the gem, which is GBC, is very, very low. This is again trans, trans uh, uh, sorry, cis, cis form, etc. So this means that you can distinguish between the stereochemistry, as we have said before. Now we go to another phenomena of coupling constant. What about also substitution? Then you see the coupling constant around 6 point to 10. What about if it is meta coupling? 1 to 3. What about if it is para coupling? Very, very low, 1.5. And you can practice with these examples. You can practice more with such structures, which you can not only expect the chemical shift, but also what about the coupling constant? In this case, you can uh, see. Then we'll go to another very important phenomena. When you see such a phenomena, this is the peaks, which you, it is like that. If you see the peaks like that, it means that you have bar substitution. So immediately you draw benzene ring and you make bar substitution. Why? Because you get this mirror image. So this is very important phenomena when you study the NMR. And this is the expansion. Expansion means that if you don't see the peaks clearly, then you can take this part and you expand it to see it clearly. So you see these peaks, and we call it also AB spectrum. So AB spectrum means that it is mirror image. So you draw the structure like this way, then you start to know. So if you see such phenomena, then immediately draw bar substitution. And this is, again, you can practice with the N plus one rule multiplicity about the hydrogen, for example, HA and HB in this case. And you can see here HA and doublet, triplet, etc. Now we can apply some examples. If you look to this problem, now you can practice how many beaks do we have? One, two, three. What's this? TMS and TMS. They put it sometimes in order to make calibration so you are sure about the uh, chemical shift that it is in the correct way. So now I can ask you, do you have, is this structure is aliphatic or aromatic? Aliphatic. Why? Because the chemical shift is here. So the chemical shift is from 1.2, 2.5, 4. It means it is in the aliphatic region. Second question, how many peak here? One, two, three. It means that you have three type of proton and they are different from each other. Why they are different? It means that because of factors which we discussed before. It means that you will see some difference in the surrounding. So let us see together. This is a molecular formula and this is the structure. How many type of proton here? One, two, three. And how many type of proton here? One, two, three. 
But what about this? One, two, three again. Oh, this is very important in the NMR similarity. So if this missile group exactly the same like this missile, we call it magnetically and chemically equivalent. It means they give only one B, but it is actually two groups. So this is the missile group. So they are two groups, but only one B because they are similar, exactly the same. And the second is this one. And it is no N plus one rule. You will apply it by yourself because you know it. And then the finally, these two. So they are two groups, but the same chemical shift. Why? Because they are exactly the same. And so we can identify the structure. Look to the next one. What about this structure? Is it aliphatic or aromatic? Aliphatic again. And why we did this expansion? To see exactly the multiplicity because we cannot see it clearly. And if you see it doubly, it means that it is neighbored by only one proton. So one plus one equal two. So this is a structure. Again, two methyl group, and they are the same, but only one beak here. And why it is doublet? Because they are attached to only one proton. That's why they are doublet. And the second is this proton, and it is attached to bromine. That's why it is de-shielded. And it will get, if you count this, they are seven. It means N plus one rule is correct. Let us go to another example. Now you can think with me. This is aliphatic region. Oh, but now this is aromatic region. It means that you immediately draw benzene ring, right? And then attach to aliphatic region. So this is a benzene ring. And this is triplet and the triplet. It means CH2 attached to CH2. Remember the slide before, right? But now I have a question to you. Why? this chemical shift is different than this. It means that these two CH2 group are different from each other. And how is it can different? Oh, one attached to oxygen, then it is more de-shielded. So now we learn something more. Additionally, if you look to this peak is more broad, this is because it is OH. And how we can prove that it is functional group? It is broad. And you don't apply N plus one rule to the functional group. How you can approve it? If you add DTO to your NMR tube, you check it, and then you rerun it again, then the, it will be exchanged. So it will be, in an, it will be moved to another place, or it can be also vanished. It can be disappeared. So if it is exchangeable or disappeared, it means it is functional group. But the others never, have this phenomena. So this is, is especially, especially for the functional group. So this is a benzene ring, CH2, and the another CH2, which is this de-shielded. Now again, another structure. So look to this peak. It is more broad. Immediately you say it is functional group, and now you know how to prove it. And then you can also see that this is doublet, and the other is quartet. So you can identify the structure. So this is a missile group, and the, CH, which attached by carbonyl and NH. Now we can go to another structure, which is uh, this one, which you can see also that they are different in the chemical shift. Of course, this CH2 here, it is, will be de-shielded because of the oxygen atom, and this CH2, which is attached to the nitrogen as well, but this is affected uh, uh, this way. Now we go to carbon-13. And my question, do you think the factors affecting the, the proton in MR will be the same factors affecting the carbon-13? Now I can hear you. Of course, it will be the same. So if you have electron withdrawing group, it means that it will be de-shielded. Why? Because high frequency and low field. Let us see also about the chemical shift. So the chemical shift will be in big range from zero to 220. And how I could identify the peaks? If it is from zero until about 90, it will be aliphatic. Then it comes to the aromatic and the double bond. And from 168 until end is especially for, car for carbonyl group. So mainly three groups you can identify. And this is how you can see that Proton NMR, carbon-13, and the overlap of both. 
So if you look, for example, Broton NMR, we agreed that this is the aromatic region. So if you go here to the carbon-13, you will see that it is the same. So it is overlapped here. And from here, you will see the carbonyl group. And you can look carefully for this moieties in order to see the chemical shift of this. And the same also that you can apply the rules to different functional groups, as you could see from different examples. Now I can apply this rule to this. If you look to the spectra, how many peaks here? Three peaks. It means that you have three types of carbons. And why you have one at this delta, which is in the aliphatic region, and you have two peaks, which is in the region of aromatic and the double bond? Oh, because you have this structure. So this carbon is here, and this is a double bond. And how you can recognize between this CH2 and CH? I think this will be CH2 and this will be CH. That's why, because this is higher in intensity. So this is the assignment CH2, then the double bond, which is CH2, then CH, which is less in intensity. Another example, so between zero and 90, this will be the aliphatic region from 90 until here will be aromatic. And after that, it will be the carbonyl group. So this is spectacular for the carbonyl group. I think you agree with me that it is really fun to study the NMR. If you see, this is a, a assignment of some carbon atoms a, in the aromatic and heterocyclic compound. For example, if you look to this carbon, it is at 143, of course, because it is attached to oxygen atom. So now you can see easily that it is the same factors. You can go further for many examples here of heterocyclic compound to assign carbon-13 based on uh, what we have discussed. This is a reference and the link is, I would like to say as usual that we will be strong together. It doesn't matter the gender. It doesn't matter the color. It doesn't matter the religion because we all hope to live with each other in peace and to cooperate for science and the technology. I am very grateful to all these places who had been really the main reason starting from Egypt, where I got my education for free. Thank you so much for my great professors, Magda Zahran and Sabrina al and for all of you. And I hope you have enjoyed my literature. I ended by Sweden and by Egypt. Thank you.